Hi, my name is Rhoda Barath. I am a Caribbean author. I work at the University of the West Indies. I teach students how to do academic research and how to do academic writing. But most importantly, I am a reader. The bookshelf behind me should indicate that to you. But today we're celebrating Word, World, sorry, World Read Aloud Day. Um, it's February 2nd, and I'm sitting in my study, one of my favorite places to be, and I'm going to read a little bit for you. But before I start reading, I wanted to share something with you. This is one of the oldest books I own. It's a collection, hardcover collection of grim fairy tales. I love fairy tales. I love the fairy tales from all different cultures. So I have different books from different cultures. Um, with their fairy tales. I love to collect them and this is really old and one of the things that I love about the book is Can you see it properly from here the illustrations on the inside like lovely beautifully colored illustrations? Hopefully you're seeing it properly But I'm not reading from Grimm's fairy tale today I'm going to read from a collection that is Caribbean based. So this is Philip Sherlock from the Caribbean, from Jamaica, who would have compiled um, a number of Anansi folk tales. So I'm gonna read a bit of that for you. Let me start at the very, from the very, um, from the beginning. This is pretty old too. This book is almost as old as I am, probably older than I am. I'd have to check. I have to check the publication information to see when it was published. First edition, 1956, but this is not a first edition. This would have been reprinted in 1971. So this is older than I am. Who was Anansi? He was a man and he was a spider. When things went well, he was a man. Big surprise. But when he was in great danger, he became a spider, safe in his web high up on the ceiling. That was why his friend Mouse called him Ceiling Thomas. Anansi's home was in the villages and forests of West Africa. From there, long years ago, thousands of men and women came to the islands of the Caribbean. They brought with them the stories that they loved, the stories about clever Brer Anansi and his friends Tiger and Crow and Moose Moose and Cassandra the cat. Today the people of the islands tell these stories to each other. So in some country village in Jamaica, when the sun goes down, the children gather around an old woman and listen to the stories of Anansi. In the dim light they see the animals, goat, rat, crow and the others, behaving like men and women. They see how excited everyone becomes as soon as Anansi appears. They laugh at the way in which he tricks all the, the strong animals and gets the better of those who are much bigger than himself. At last, the story comes to an end. The night and bedtime come. But next day, when the children see Ceiling Thomas, the spider, they know that he is more than a spider. They know that he is an Ansi, the spider man, and they do him no harm. So now, I'm going to read for you A, a short story called The Cling Cling Bird. In the days when Anansi and Tiger were still friends, a very long time ago, there was a bird that everyone called the Cling Cling Bird. It built its nest on the top of the slender bamboo trees. In the evening, when the breeze came down from the mountains, the slender bamboo trees waved to and fro, up and down, and knocked the Cling Cling Bird to, sorry, rocked, not knocked and rocked the Kling Kling bird to sleep. Anansi was friendly with the Kling Kling bird. Many a time he sat and watched the bird building its nest where the evening breeze would rock it gently to and fro. Many a time Anansi and the bird played cards together before the hour came for the breeze to blow and for the bird to go to bed. You know, Mr. Kling Kling, it's easy to beat you at cards, said Anansi while they were talking together one evening just before bedtime. Easy to beat me? You mean easy to be beaten by me? Said Kling Kling quickly. Haven't I won the game? That's just once in a while, said Anansi. 
I'll tell you what we will do, replied Kling Kling. We will make a bargain. Tomorrow the one who loses must pay a fine to the one who wins, and the fine is this. The one who wins may take a piece of flesh from the one who loses. And Nancy agreed. Day after day he lost the game, and the Kling Kling bird took so much flesh away from him that Anansi became very thin. Finally his patience gave out. He said that he would play only one game more. They played one more game. This time Anansi won. Full of delight, he cried out, Now then, brother Kling Kling, I am going to take a piece of flesh from you. Anansi was so pleased that he laughed. At last his turn had come. But the Kling Kling bird said, Why? and flew away. For a long time, Anansi tried to catch Kling Kling. They were friends no longer. Anansi set traps and hid them in the grass near the berries on which Kling Kling loved to feed. He made the wides from the wood sorry he made the wides from the woods into long slippery nooses and hid them where clinkling liked to walk the wides are, are traps right but it was no use clinkling was too clever he saw all the traps and avoided them sometimes he would hide in the top of a tree and without a sound watch anansi set a trap and then when it was all done he would suddenly cry out why and flew away, leaving Anansi puzzled and angry. At last, Anansi went to his friend Tiger and said, I beg you, Mr. Tiger, help me to catch that old Kling Kling bird. He wouldn't pay his fine. He flew away and I cannot catch him at all. And what will you give me if I help you catch him? asked Tiger. Oh, my sweet Tiger, said Anansi, I will give you a cow. A whole cow? asked Tiger who was very greedy and very fond of cow. A whole cow, Mr. Tiger, I promise, said Anansi. So Tiger thought and thought for a long time, and at last he said, I tell you what we will do, Bray Anansi. I will lie down in the house and pretend to be dead. You must take a bell and walk all around the town, calling out at the top of your voice, The Great King Tiger is dead! The Great King Tiger is dead! Then all the people will come to the funeral and you can catch him. Now the next day was a great market day. Kling Kling went to the market and bought peas and rice and codfish and plantain and sweet potatoes. While he was buying the sweet potatoes, he heard a bell ringing and he asked the people what it was. Ah, said a stout market woman, the great King Tiger is dead. What? You mean that Tiger, the great Tiger is dead? asked Kling Kling. Yes, said the people standing around. Yes, what she says is true. The great King Tiger is dead. And when did he die? asked Kling Kling. Yesterday, just before 12 o'clock. Then, cried Kling Kling, I must hurry away to put on my second best coat and go to the funeral. Kling Kling rushed home and put on his second best two-tailed blue coat and his shoes that were so new that they cried out, Quee, quee, when he walked in them. They squeak in. When he had finished dressing, Kling Kling went to Tiger's house. When he got there, he saw a great crowd outside and he shook his head and said, So the great King Tiger is dead. Yes, they replied. The great King Tiger is dead. When did he die? Yesterday, just before 12, they replied. What killed him? Was it fever? Was it an accident? How did he die? The heat of the weather killed him, they said. And has he laughed at all since he died? asked Kling Kling. No. Then he isn't dead at all, said Kling Kling. Don't you know that a man is not dead until he laughs a big last laugh? Tiger was in the nearest room, listening at the window. When he heard what Kling Kling said, he broke into a great laugh that shook the house. And Kling Kling said, Ha ha! I never hear a dead man laugh yet. And he flew away. So Tiger never got the cow. I hope you all enjoy that. So that was um, a story called The Kling Kling Bird, taken from Anansi the Spider Man, which is a collection of folk tales from the Caribbean compiled by Philip Sherlock. Happy Read Aloud Day.
enjoy the rest of the day and continue to read reading is amazing transports you bye folks <laughs>